the bottom section of the diary has a different kind of a scale. Um, seems a little odd, but I didn't want anybody to have zero breast size for example. <laughs> so it's organized around you for usual. And obviously only as an individual you know what's usual for you. And then uh, what's more or less from your usual. And so the first thing is appetite. What's your usual appetite? Is it less or greater? And if it's much less it would be M. If it's a little less it would be L. If it's a little, if it's usual, it's U. If it's a little increased, it's Y. And if it's a lot increased, it's Z or Z. So appetite is one of those things that we know very little about in relation to the menstrual cycle. But we do know that without even perceiving it, women eat a little more after they've ovulated in the weeks before they get their flow. Um, anybody know why? And, and I should say, contrary to belief, we don't gain a lot of weight during that two weeks either. Oh, because your metabolism increases. Yes. In other words, because progesterone has an effect on your core temperature, in other words, you have to raise the temperature mm -hmm. from progesterone, it requires more energy, mm. therefore you eat a bit more. It's actually about 300 calories more. So that's a good thing about ovulating also. Um, the next one is breast size. And some of us may not be aware of changes in breast size. But other times you feel like your breasts are swelling. So this is a way to record breast swelling. Usually they don't get smaller, but often they do swell briefly in the, in the week, the last week or two of the cycle. And um, the next one is interest in sex. Our interest in sex does change across the cycle as best we can determine. And it, in fact, the, the studies that have been done have compared it with the um, interest in sex in women who are on something like the birth control pill as a, as a way of showing the, a difference or a contrast. Mm -hmm. So interest in sex varies across the cycle. Any idea when it would be most likely to be high? Just before ovulation. Just yeah, before ovulation, true. at the time when the stretchy mucus is there. And what determines that is not clear, but there may be an increase in male hormones that comes around the same time as the peak in estrogen. Mm. The other one is feeling of energy. And um, this is very individual. And sometimes when I'm recording and I write that my energy is L, a little less than usual, it means that I'm a bit blue. And occasionally I'll go back and correct a zero up under the feeling of depression mm -hmm. when I realize that my low energy and stuff is maybe I am feeling blue. Or it may be that you're just super tired or you didn't get enough sleep or you know, lots of reasons for that. The, the, the other line is feeling of self-worth. One of the ways in which this diary differs from the ones that are often used clinically for documenting PMS or something is that it has some positives on it. Energy, self-worth, interest in sex, some, some very healthy, normal positives, as well as some of things that other people consider negatives. Um, so this is has to do with your mixture of what's happening in your life, what you've accomplished, how people have treated you, your social circle. Um, and I think it's a lucky person who goes through most days feeling lots of self-worth. Sometimes we have, you know, times when we don't feel very good about ourselves. And so again, by asking yourself the question, you gain some insight into who you are. And now the final section of the diary is outside stresses. All of the rest have been sort of internal interpretation of how you're feeling, all these things. This is meant to be as objective as you can. In other words, 
I've been studying 20 hours a day, or I've had to work overtime at work, or um, there was just an earthquake, or you know, something, something that is highly stressful. That needs to be objectively recorded as outside stress. Uh, sometimes I will look at diaries, or my own, other people's diaries, or my own, and see why Z, 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 Z. Maybe the only um, usual is a weekend, the odd weekend day, and think, uh-uh, that's not good. You can't be healthy if you feel so much outside stress all the time. So it's, it's meant to be more objective, mm -hmm. as much as you can, about the responsibilities you have, the conflicting demands on your time, mm -hmm. that kind of thing. So when we answer, when we fill in the other ones about the um, feeling depressed, feeling frustrated, those things. Mm -hmm. Is that, should we be doing that sort of very quickly, like not thinking about it too much, kind of going with your initial? Yes. Not yes. Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, I think it's a, it's an initial sense of what things are like. Right. Whereas this one is more like, okay, what's going on? Yeah, sort of objective. It helps to interpret what's going on with the rest of the diary. And again, it helps us to be able to see the connections among stress and what's happening with our, our ovulation or what's happening with other things like bad headaches. Well, maybe it's because I'm really stressed right now, right? I would like to thank you all for helping with this um, video and working with me so that we can all learn more about menstrual cycles and our own mysterious, um, sometimes um, embarrassing, but important internal hormonal rhythms. Thank you, each of you, for taking the time to do this.